We're installing a Warm Carnal plug and play remote starting system on a 2015 Kia Sportage. This vehicle is a standard key start vehicle. We're going to get started with the installation. We're going to use our plastic tool to remove the side panel. We're going to create a gap and go ahead and remove the panel. We can take uh, some of the door gasket off here if it makes it a little easier to get that off. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove two Phillips screws from the side panel. We're going to remove the Phillips screws in the front of the dash. We're going to remove the dash. There's two uh, clips, one located here, one located here, that we have to get the uh, dash to go up over. So you might want to just pull them out before you start, or just keep in mind that uh, these clips have to be released also when you're pulling the dash out. I pulled the top clip out with my pick a little bit and started it uh, coming out. I'm going to remove this so I have somewhere to grab and uh, just going to apply outward pressure on the dash and get it to release. Use my plastic tool once I get a gap and kind of gently release the clips. Now keep in mind right now this popped back in so I have to pull this little clip out on the side again and get it over that clip and then we can go ahead and, and continue on to get this off. Just going to pull out a little bit on the bottom here and the dash will come off and go ahead and, and remove the lower dash completely. I'm going to release the diagnostic plug from its bracket by pushing the ears on the side end while we push back on the plug. We're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolts from the protection plate. We're going to remove three Phillips screws from the steering column cover plastic. One located here. One located here on the face and one located here on the face. I'm going to unlock the steering wheel. Turn the wheel to this position. Remove the Phillips screw in the face. We're going to turn the wheel to the opposite position and remove this Phillips screw. I'm going to recenter the wheel, shut the key off remove it from the ignition. We're going to unsnap the steering column cover plastic. Just going to make sure I'm fully extended all the way down. Um, I like to put pressure on the seam with my thumb. So sometimes I start at back, sometimes I start in the front. So we'll, we'll try it in the back. We're just going to press here, pull down a little, take it right off. Okay, so we got some kind of aftermarket stuff in here. This looks like maybe it's a sunroof or something. Just keep in mind, this is not mine. Um, unfortunately, it'll be here for the video. I'll try to tuck it away, but uh, you won't have that hanging in your vehicle. We're going to start with the ignition switch portion of our T-harness. We're going to go ahead and install it. We're going to unplug the ignition switch from the vehicle. We're going to press the release clip while we pull back on the plug. We're going to install our T-harness plug into the back of the ignition switch. Plug it in, make sure it locks. We're going to take the plug that we removed from the ignition and we're going to plug it into the other side of our T-harness. We're going to ground our system. Now the ground is a very important connection um, 
A lot of times it's it's overlooked and uh, people will connect this somewhere where there's plastic and that's a no-no like this bolt has plastic here metal this bolt actually this screw is in metal but then it goes into a plastic vent so no nope, that's no good um, I'm gonna show you where I would ground the system a good ground can be obtained right here at this 10 millimeter nut so we've we've connected our ground uh, at this point I'm going to take the harness I'm going to go back this way and follow the factory harness and I'm just going to put a zip tie right here now we can go ahead and we can tape or zip our ground to the harness so it follows the same path as the main ignition harness. I'm going to go ahead and wrap a couple pieces of Tessa around it. This is uh, a shop job so we want it to look good. Now we have plenty of room to stow our equipment when we're done. We're going to install the secondary portion of our T-harness. Our first connection is going to be made at the diagnostic plug that we unclipped from the lower dash when we removed it. We're going to plug our diagnostic plug end into the diagnostic plug that we removed from the bracket in the first steps. And now when we put the vehicle back together, we're going to mount our diagnostic plug back in the dash. At this point, we're going to remove the two 10 millimeter nuts that hold the fuse box BCM assembly in place. We're going to remove two at the top and we're going to remove one right here on the side. If you have a problem getting to the nuts, you can pull these two Phillips screws here and remove the switch assembly. This will give you a straight shot through here to get the 10 millimeter nuts off. We need to get to a plug on the back of the of the fuse box BCM assembly. So we've taken the, uh, the uh, nuts off so we can get a little room and, and, and pull it back a little bit so we can get behind there to unplug a plug. So we're just going to pull it down a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm going to release this blue harness by just pulling forward and removing it. So we slid the blue plug off the side of the BCM fuse box assembly and we need to make two connections. Uh, behind here you see this uh, blue and red wires on the end those are a uh, pair or of can wires we're going to go ahead and we're going to make connections to these wires so it's a little tight in here so the reason I took the BCM out is so we can move it down a little bit and get our hands in here to make the the two connections so probably the best way would be to come back around here we're going to remove a little bit of tape it's only a, uh, a piece about an inch and a half long. I'm just going to get that tape out of the way. And we're able to reach around here and access the wires. So with the tape out of the way, we can at least get the wires, um, get them farther back away from the plug, which will make it a little bit easier to make the connection. Okay, so I've isolated the two wires I'm going to be dealing with the blue is our can high and the red is our can low and as you see they're on the end uh, pin of the plug right here the opposite each other on the top and bottom row on the end pins so I'm going to use posi tap connectors to make my connections it's a three piece connector we're going to unscrew the bottom we have a piece with a needle piece with a groove. We're going to put the groove 
over the wire. We're going to screw the connector back together, making sure not to cross thread it. We're going to tighten it down. The needle's going to pierce the wire, and it's going to provide a connection point for us to connect our incoming wire. Um, thing with these, you don't want to crank them down really tight. They won't work if you crank them too tight. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave the camera rolling. You can watch me struggle, um, but it can be done. It's not that hard. I've got a lot of wire here to work with, so I'm going to come up around the back, put the piece on, and then I'm going to have my other hand over here, and we screw it together. Again, not going to not going to go crazy on the tightening. It's going to bring it down till it stops. I'm going to look at it, make sure it's uh, you know about should have about the thickness of the wire in space. You should be compressing the wire. So go ahead. I'll put the other one on. Doing the red and the blue wire. Okay, so we have both of our taps installed. I'll show you. We have our taps installed. Now we're going to loosen the collar portion about a turn. Don't loosen them too much, you'll drop them in the car. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna route our incoming wires in and make our connection. So on our secondary portion of our T harness, we have a twisted pair here. We have a gray and a gray with black twisted together. We're going to be working uh, our can high as the solid gray. We're going to strip about an eighth to a quarter inch of insulation off the end. Uh, we'll also do that on our can low. We're going to go ahead and we're going to insert this into the collar of the posi tap and tighten the collar down. When you insert it in, um, it's going to bottom out and then it's going to just go in a little deeper. You'll, you'll feel it bottom out at first. You want to just push it in a little deeper. You'll feel it go in and that's the wire spreading around a cone inside the connector. And then we're going to tighten, tighten the connector and give it a pull test. I'm going to give you a close-up. Um, there are a lot of videos on how to use the, the PosiTap connector also so you can take a look at those videos so we're doing the can low our red wire connection and if you look at your schematic you'll see that the solid gray goes to the can high which is blue and the gray with a black stripe goes to the can low can low can high We're going to go ahead and set the fuse box back in place and get our uh, plug over here where it originally was so we don't have anything crunched up behind the fuse box. And just going to set it back in place while we're working. We're not going to put the um, not going to put the screws in yet until we test our our um, device. So we just got that set here. We can go ahead and we're going to clip the plug back onto the BCM fuse box. So you can see our CAN connections right there. We're going to start the pairing process. We're going to locate the program button on the top of the module. We're going to hold the program button down while we plug in the 6-pin power plug. When we do this, the lights on the front are going to begin to cycle. We're going to release when the blue LED is lit. It's going to be the first light to light. Release the button. Now if we keep the button down too long and we release on a different color, just unplug the 6-pin, hold the program button down, plug the 6-pin plug back in. The lights will cycle for as long as we hold the button down. We want to release on solid blue. Next, we're going to plug in the 20 pin plug. We're going to be careful not to touch the button. We're going to plug in the white plug on the top of the module. We're going to need to have the key to the vehicle at this point. We're going to place the key in the ignition and turn the ignition to the run position. The blue light will turn off. It will turn back on and flash rapidly. This is an indication that programming is complete. 
We're now going to shut the key off and remove it from the ignition. We're going to activate remote starting. We're going to lock the doors three times. This will trigger remote starting of the vehicle. Okay, we have not made our parking light connection. The OEM remote does not function while the engine is running on this vehicle. In order to enter the vehicle with the vehicle running in remote start mode, you need to place the key in the door lock and turn it the old fashioned way to unlock your doors. If you turn it twice, you'll unlock all of the doors. You can now enter the vehicle Place the key in the ignition, turn the key to the run position, press the brake pedal, place the vehicle in gear, and drive away. To make our parking light connection, we're going to unplug the plug behind the directional switch. We're going to push the release clip and pull the plug outward. With the plug out, looking at the plug from the back with the clip in the upright position, our parking light wire is this blue wire right at the first pin. So we're going to use a posi tap and we're going to connect our pink wire from our device directly to the parking light activation wire. We're going to use a posi tap connector to make our parking light connection. We're going to go ahead and we're going to place the piece with the groove over the wire. Screw the connector back together being careful not to cross thread it. We're going to loosen the collar. We're going to slide in our incoming wire push it in and tighten the collar and give it a pull test. Ah. Yeah. Daddy? What? Huh? Okay, what time is it? Oh, I'm coming home. Bye. Huh? Who's eBay? You sold something? Yes, what, what'd you sell? Say it again, honey. Huh? What do you need? Your laptop. I have my laptop. From Nina's? I don't have Nina's, I have Daddy's. Where's Nina's? Alright, I'll be home, honey. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. We're going to activate the remote starter with the parking lights connected. I'm going to pair our device with the RFK411 single button remote capable of locking, unlocking, and starting the vehicle. This is a solution if you don't want to have to put the key in the door lock and turn it to unlock the vehicle while the engine is running in remote start mode. We're going to go ahead and get started. When you purchase the RFK411 and EVO 1 combo from us, we pair the RFK411 to the EVO. There's a pairing process that must be done. If you're upgrading your product purchased from us, we can send you a private video that will show you how to pair your remotes to the EVO. We have a pairing video for every scenario. So we're going to go ahead and get started installing our RFK411. We're going to locate our cable and our antenna. We're going to plug the antenna into the black plug on our cable. We're going to plug the blue plug into the blue four pin port on the top of our device. We're now going to be able to control our vehicle using the RFK411 remotes. We're outside the vehicle. We have the RFK411 on the keychain here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to lock the vehicle. To lock the vehicle, press and release the button one time. 
The doors will lock. To unlock the vehicle, press and release the button two times. The doors will unlock. To start the vehicle, press and hold. Now this will give you an extended range and you will be able to control locking and unlocking whether the vehicle is running or not. There's a lock command. There's the unlock command. We will also have the ability now to turn the engine off because remember the OEM remote does not work while the engine's running. So if you press lock, lock, lock again while the engine's running, you will not be able to shut the engine off. With the RFK411, you will be able to shut the engine off. We're going to pair our device with the MyCar smartphone controller. The MyCar smartphone controller will give us the ability to control our vehicle from our smartphone. We're going to go ahead and get started. If you buy your device as a kit, we perform the pairing process for you. If you're upgrading your product, we can send you a private video that will show you how to pair the MyCar to your device. We're going to go ahead to install the MyCar. We're going to plug our blue plug into the blue plug on the device. When you plug the MyCar device in, it will immediately start searching for a cellular and GPS signal. This will be indicated by the lights flashing on the device. The green light flashing is a cellular indicator that the device is looking for a cellular signal. The red light flashing is an indication the device is looking for a GPS signal. When the lights go solid, it is acquired and locked onto the signal. We're going to set our device on the top of the steering column temporarily with the correct side facing down and let it acquire a signal. We're going to test our device when the signals lock. We're outside the vehicle. We have our app up and running. We're going to go ahead and we're going to send a lock command to our vehicle. Our doors will lock. We're going to send an unlock command. Our doors will unlock. We're going to start our engine. Vehicle's going to start. A runtime indicator is going to tell us how long the vehicle is going to run for. You'll see that right here. Then we have a temperature indicator, voltage, signal strength, uh, door status. Our doors are locked. We're going to shut our engine off. Our runtime is set to zero. We're going to track our vehicle. Okay, I want to show you the wire routing. It's a little hard to, uh, to show you, but I'm going to try my best here. So there's our harness. We, we've come out of the steering column. We immediately try to get you know, out from under the plastic of the steering column. And then we come back over this way towards the BCM. We got one zip tie through the BCM right here. And we've wrapped the tie around our harness. Here's our can connections. And we put the diagnostic plug harness back up around here to take up a little room. So our plug-in connection's up in the back here. And this is the diagnostic plug that we're now going to mount in the bracket. Our unit it was down here. We have our valet button zip tied to our harness. So everything's centralized to one harness. I like to do this so that we don't have a spaghetti mess underneath the dash of all these different harnesses. So there's, there's a good view of it. Now what I'm going to do, which I don't normally like to do, is I'm going to zip up here. It's going to block the fuse box, but there really isn't too many choices. So in order to access the fuses, you'd have to, you know, cut the unit down. Um, unless you can come up with something creative, you know, get it in there upside down or something and, and zip it over on the side like this. So this is where I'm going to zip it, and I'll show you what I do when it's done. So I'm going to take a 14-inch zip, and I'm going to go the back of the unit through both holes. Then I'm going to go up on the top and I'm going to go around the two mounting uh, spots for the BCM and I'm going to wrap the zip tie. 
I'm going to show you when it's done. Sometimes to get the zip tie to go around something so I don't have to reach for it, put a couple bends in it like this. Now when I go around those two points, it'll be easier for me to grab the zip tie because I bent it. So we're looking up under the fuse box and uh, you can see the unit up there. A little hard to get the lighting right. Um, the zip ties around the top and I'll show you the rest of the uh, harness routing. Okay, so here's the end result. Our ground branches off here, goes to the uh, 10 millimeter back there. Our wires loop back around, go up underneath the steering column cover plastic, parking light wire, follows the main harness. Then we come over to our zip tie through the BCM so we're not pulling on any other harnesses. And we've tied that there, come through and we've also did a little loop here to use up some of this uh, long harness and we go up to the module with the zip tie on the top We're trying to move the light so you can see a little better and there's the zip tie and it goes around the two posts you can sneak the zip tie around the posts and this thing is rock solid nothing's gonna rattle nothing's gonna come out so you know the end result it has to look good too I don't like messy installs Another thing you want to do before you reassemble the car is a range of motion test. Um, unlock the steering, pull all the way out on the steering column. Make sure that we have nothing binding, nothing too tight that won't let the wheel move throughout its full range of motion. Everything's going together beautifully with our wire routing. We're ready to insert our diagnostic plug and put the last piece of the dash on after we tighten up these bolts. But whenever you're reassembling, you want to look for any interference problems. Make sure when you snap your plastic on, we don't have any, any binding, um, and then it'll snap on and everything will work good. You got to make sure the plugs, you know, are, are the way I have them so that the steering column cover plastic doesn't bind. But look for any type of interference problems on reassembly.